Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Asyadu an la ilaha illallah. Asyadu an la ilaha illallah. Asyadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Asyadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayy ala sgalah. Hayy ala sgalah. Hayy ala al-falah. Hayy ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. La ilaha illa Allah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani r-rajim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wa atharil mursaleen. Shafi'i al-muthnibin wa habibi rabbil alameen. Muhammadin salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdihu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم we bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the best of speech that is the book of Allah and adhere to its commands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who come to know the best of ways, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and make us amongst those who embark on such a mission. Ya Ahbaba Rasulillahi salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi, yuhadithuna al-Qur'anu an yawm al-Qiyamah. Brothers and sisters, the Qur'an speaks about the day of judgment. And the Qur'an has this style of presenting the day of judgment in very vivid imagery. And one thing that the Quran tells us about the Day of Judgment is that the world is going to seize the way that we know it. The way we know the world today, that will no longer be the world where everybody else is resurrected. To give you just an imagery of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun is folded up and loses its light. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ And when the stars fall down and they lose their luster. وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ And when the mountains vanish like a mirage. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ When the she camels are abandoned. And this is in reference that people will no longer care for their wealth. Because the she camel to the Arabs, a she camel that was pregnant was so cared for. Because this means more money. But at this point he said that people are going to abandon what they think is valuable to them. Or what they thought was valuable to them. When the wild beasts are herded together. Some say that now that we live, we live in two habitations. There is the habitation for the wild beasts and a habitation for man. But on that day 
no one will be afraid of the other, meaning that there are bigger concerns at that point. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when the souls are sorted out, the like placed with the like. And so far the Quran is telling us about changes in the cosmos. The sun, the stars, the mountains, the wild beasts, the habitations, what people care for. And then all of the sudden, subhanallah, they say that this is referred to in the studies of Islamic and Quranic sciences, at-tasweerul Qur'ani. The way that the Quran gives images to people. And subhanallah, and then immediately the Quran says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ When that small girl, that infant was buried alive, when she is questioned for what crime was she killed? Subhanallah, just imagine the way that the Quran gives us the story here is that the Quran gives you a lot of big image and then what we say is that the Quran zooms in. People who like the idea of cinematography, they like to take photographs. You know, they say that people are very skilled when they are able to give you a big image initially and then they immediately zoom in. So it's talking about the stars and it's talking about the sun and it's talking about the wild beasts. And these are all big imagery. And then all of, the, all of the sudden the Quran zooms in and it focuses. It says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيُّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ In reference to an Arab practice in the days before Islam, it said that a man would have a baby girl delivered, born, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in that society, they thought that it was okay to bury the girl alive and they would just bury the girl alive having done absolutely no crime. So the Quran is telling us because in this world, the crime was concealed since she was buried and the victim never uttered a word. The victim never spoke. So the Quran said, we are going to unravel what was concealed. And now it is the chance of the victim to speak. And we will be asking the victim. And of course, this is a rhetorical question. For what crime were you killed? Say this, subhanAllah. You know, to many of us, this week was the first week that our children went back to school. And before people went to school, there was the Sandy Hook massacre that took place where 20 young innocent souls were lost, 28 in total, but 20 of them were young children ranging anywhere between 6 and 7 or 5, 6 and 7 and 8 there. And the shock that everybody had who learned about the story is, why? As if we are all echoing what the Quran is telling us, this small soul this young, innocent soul, what crime was that soul guilty of? And subhanAllah, as a parent, you know there are two safe places for us. Home or school. And we like the idea of taking our children to school. And the last thing that we really worry about is that I would not want to receive a phone call that your son or your daughter got into a fight or somebody got sent to the principal's office this morning. And you know, these are the things that we are concerned about. But never in our wild thoughts, we would think that I will receive a phone call from the school and say that your son is just being killed. Father was telling me this morning, he said, now every morning I go to drop my daughter to school. He said that there is a police car waiting. It's an elementary school. Can you imagine, subhanAllah, a police car to guard an elementary school. And as if it's becoming very fashionable, what happens is that yesterday similar stories took place. The day before in Arizona, somebody has made threats on Facebook. And now schools are no longer becoming a safe place for our children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our children, Ya Rabbul Alameen. But in the midst of this, I like to point out to three things, please. Number one, the way we invoke God 
when such a tragedy takes place. So some people are giving their explanation as to what happens. So somebody who was running for the president of the U.S., he actually spoke out and he said, the reason why there is so much violence in our schools is because we have taken God out of a school. And with all due respect, and we love our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to say that violence is taking place simply because the name of God is not mentioned in the place where the violence took place, that is very problematic. Because few days back, 115 people were killed in Pakistan because they were Shia and supposedly they were uttering the name of God. Here, they were saying the name of God. How come they got killed? If we think that we explain violence because of the absence of the mentioning of the name of God or Allah, then how do you explain the number of Sunnis who are killed in the masjid or the number of Shias who are killed in the masjid? How do you explain this? Or people who would look into such a tragedy and say, they deserve it. Do you know what these people did to the Iraqi kids? Allah is punishing them. Subhanaka ya Rabbi. Allah is punishing them through killing children. Are you serious? You have to be morally sick to think this way. Wallahi, you have to be morally sick to think this way. And there is nothing religious about this. To actually say, this is known as blame the victim theology. The victim is dead, but they're dead because of their own fault. Allah is punishing them, Allah is punishing them through killing children. Is this really the kind of a God that we worship? A'udhu billah, wallahi, if it pleases God that children are, are to be killed this way, this is not a God that is worthy of worship. Wahasha lillah, far be it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that these are the kind of thoughts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to have about him subhanahu wa ta'ala. That God would actually take pleasure in seeing something like this. No, subhanallah, a similar story was told. Imam al-Qurtubi narrates the story that one time a Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قال يا رسول الله إني أذنبت في الجاهلية ذنبا he said, oh, messenger of Allah, before my Islam, I just made this big sin. He said, what happened? He said, I was married to this woman, and she was pregnant. He said, وَكُنْتُ أَخَافُ أَن تَضَعَ لِي بْنَةً He said, and I was very concerned. I did not want a baby girl. And my wife knew that I didn't want a baby girl, simply because they thought that baby girls were a source of shame. So he said, فَوَضَعَتْهَا بِنْتًا and my wife did deliver a baby girl. But then she said to me, لَكِنَّهَا مَاتَتْ He said, but the baby girl died. You know, it was a stillbirth. He said, فَفَرِحْتُ لِذَلِكَ فَرَحًا شَدِيدًا He said, I was so overjoyed that the girl is dead. And he said, وَشَكَرْتُ الْآلِهَةَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ He said, and I praised and I thanked God for doing, for taking care of business for me. He said, وَمَرَّةِ الْأَيَّامِ So then days went by, and then he said, وَكَانَتْ لِجَعْرِنَا بْنَةً صَغِيرًا He said, our neighbors had this young, beautiful girl. He said, فَكُنْتُ أُلَاعِبُهَا وَأُدَاعِبُهَا He said, she used to come over and I would play with her. And he said that I just enjoyed my time with her. He said, وَأَحْبَبْتُهَا حُبًّا شَدِيدًا And I loved her tremendously. And my wife would see this. And one day she said to me, you know, had our daughter lived, she would have been as old as this girl. And I said, yes, indeed. And she said, wouldn't you want, would, do you not love this girl? Would you not wish that this was your daughter? And he said, of course, I would have loved for this girl to be my daughter. She looked at him and she said, well, guess what? This is your daughter. She is still alive. Seven years ago, I couldn't tell you, but this is your daughter. He said, فَأَبْغَطُّهَا بُغْضًا شَدِيدًا so despite all the love that I had for her, he said, but from this point on, he said that I hated the girl. Because now she is his. Subhanallah. Sometimes the values that are kept within a certain society are just sick values. So he said, and days went by, he said, and I just hated the girl more and more. And I decided that I have to cover my shame, he said. So 
He went to the daughter, to the wife, and he said, He said, I would like for this girl to, you know, go and meet her, her, her uncles. He said, put nice clothes on her. She said, I did, and I, as, as I was taking the daughter away, the wife held my hand and she said, I am trusting you with this girl. He said, I took her and then on the way, he said, I saw a bitter, a well, and I decided this would be it. He said, I took the girl and drowned her in the well. And every now and then, he said, then she would scream and she would make noise. And he said, I just kept persisting until she was no longer moving and I killed the girl. And as she is dying, she would remind, Ya Abi, inni amanatullah. She said, Dad, remember, I am amana, you, I am the trust. My mother trusted me with you. He said, I would not have any of it. He says, had them at it until she died. Now listen and just the reaction of the Prophet ﷺ. Now remember, this is a so-called non-Muslim girl. Both her parents are Kafir parents. But Muhammad ﷺ was a human being. Looked into him and he said, Wallahi. He said, the Prophet ﷺ started crying uncontrollably. He said, Wallahi, law amarani rabbi. أن أعاقب أحدا بذنب أذنبه في الجاهلية لكنت أول من أعاقب. He said, by Allah, if Allah permits me or gives me the command to punish somebody for the sin that they have done in their pre-Islamic days, he said that you would be the first in my court. You would be the first in my court. Because brothers and sisters, المسلم إنساني. A believer is one that feels for all. Can you imagine going to a doctor and the very first question the doctor asks you before they start treating you, what's your religion? And then determine whether you are worthy of help or not. See, that's not it. But what happens is that we feel for all those who are around us. Muslims, it doesn't matter, especially subhanAllah when the victims are innocent like that. And people will start talking and saying that Allah is punishing them. Yeah, akhi, this is such a terrible image to give others about Allah. That's why Sayyidina Umar used to tell people, Ya ayyuhan nas, la tubaghidu Allah ila khalqihi, wa la tubaghidu khalq Allah ila Allah. Do not be the cause for people to hate and despise Allah, and be hated and despised by Allah. Can you imagine somebody says, Ya, the people were killed because Allah wanted them dead. Ya akhi, why would Allah take pleasure in the death of innocent people like that? So as we try to explain these types of tragedies, please be careful about the way that we invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the process. That's the first point. The second point is that some of these people are mentally disturbed. And you know people who are mentally sick, subhanAllah, in our society, they have it bad already. That we tend to see mental mentally challenged people or mentally disturbed people number one they are dangerous number two they are unattractive keep away from them they are maybe punished by Allah and so when tragedies like this again take place and the perpetrator of that tragedy is somebody that was mentally disturbed our image and perception and impressions of these people who are mentally challenged are even reinforced despite the fact that these are negative notions that we have. Especially something like this happening. Supposedly, the, the perpetrator in Sandy Hook was an autistic child. And subhanAllah, inshaAllah, one day we will have a khutbah about autism. Inshaallah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Did you know that there is one child diagnosed with autism every 15 minutes? There is a child diagnosed with autism every 15 minutes. A good number of our community members, they have children who are autistic. And we don't know, subhanAllah, what causes it. It's complex cr uh, chromosome disturbance with the chromosome. We don't know what it is, but these are kids who are socially and sometimes physically and sometimes mentally are really not there. And they can be old and young and they can be, some of them can be, very calm and somebody can be very hyper, but subhanAllah, I remember one day, a brother who had an autistic child came to me and he said, Sheikh, I am so happy, he said, 
So what, what, what happened? His four-year-old son, he said, he's talking. And as a father, he said, what is so brilliant about that? All children talk, especially therefore you expect them to talk. And he said, you don't understand. He made a sentence. I said, what did he say? And he said, he said, good job. The father was taking pleasure in his son being able to say, good job. He said, because my son is so used to just saying one word, he said, but now he made a sentence. And his sentence was made up of two words. And this father is just absolutely happy. So when we hear about these things, sometimes you come to the masjid and we see children. And subhanAllah, you know, children belong in the masjid. And say, why is that kid acting so weird? What's wrong with your... Ah, be careful next time. Be careful. Telling you it's one child every 15 minutes. Be careful. That child might be the one. But the idea is, show more humanity. Wallahi. Yakhwani, wallahi al-Muslim insani. He said that the Quran makes a better human being out of you. وَالْإِنسَانِيَّ لَا تَتَجَزَّ And the humanity of a person cannot be cut into pieces. I only feel for my people. I only feel for this. As believers, we cannot be like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in understanding, Ya Rabbil Alameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثاره اقتفى So the point number one was be careful about the way that we invoke the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we use his name to explain such types of tragedies because otherwise we might end up giving one terrible image about our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala Second one has to do with our understanding of mental illness. And subhanAllah, they say that it was the Muslims that introduced the idea that people who are mentally sick are still human beings. And that's why in the tafsir of the ayah, verse number four in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said that, yes, th those who are insane or mentally challenged may not be fit to run financial transactions, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, so they're not fit for that. Yes, we understand that part of it. Not every transaction they are capable of. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to do two, three things to them. He said, take care of them physically. He said, rizquuhum, give them. Uksuhum, clothe them. And the idea of kiswa is not just about giving them something to wear, but the idea is that beautify them. The idea is that protect them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so beautifully said, Qulu lahum ma'rufa. Speak to them with splendid words. Even though they may not understand it, but Allah said, speak to them with splendid words because this way, publicly, we are all emphasizing their humanity. So sad sometimes you see people who are mentally not doing them and just people just dismiss them. And people just disregard them, drop them. The Quran said, no, 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 you cannot do that. Rather, to the very contrary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Qulu lahum qawlam ma'rufa. Speak to them with splendid words. Thus are the teachings of the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So insha'Allah, it is very important that we help out organizations and institutions that actually care for the people who are challenged within our community. The kid yesterday in Taft High School in California, supposedly he was bullied by children. And that is why he took a shotgun to school and he just wanted revenge. Bullying is a serious problem in our community. When I say our community, I'm not talking about the Muslim community. I'm talking about the schools where our children go. I'm talking about where we live. I'm talking about all these issues. Brothers, you cannot just look at these issues and say, these are issues that belong to the Kafirs. These are issues that only belong to white people or the blacks or the Latinos. That is just silly. That is silly. If it is happening here, it is happening to us as well. 
And our job is when we see these issues, we actually fix, not curse them. Isn't that the whole idea of in Uridu illa al-islah hamastata'at? That all I care for is rectifying, mending, and beautifying, and fixing. So inshallah, that's what we are after and that's what we are here for. And one of the organizations that are really doing a marvelous job in our area that is worthy of all the help and the support that we can extend is Access California. And I know that every now and then we come and we remind you about all the services that Access extends to the community. Number one is please, number one is make sure that you make use of the services that are provided. Be it in the form of counseling, be it in the form of immigration, be it in the form of extending hand, a helping hand, or whatever the case is, please do call inshallah and you will find this place to be very resourceful. Also, inshallah, the end of this month, the last Sunday of January, is going to be our annual gala where we appeal to our community, inshallah, for their help. So, inshallah, we do want you to attend the gala. We do want you to participate, to donate, to buy a ticket, and make sure that you are going to show up. And our um, keynote speaker is going to be the second congressman, Muslim congressman, Andre Carson. He's going to be the keynote speaker, inshallah, in the gala. So, please, inshallah, do to participate in that. And also, inshallah, do remember that the College of Islamic Studies, the first quarter, inshallah, will be taking place on the February 15th. And finally, it is getting very cold nowadays. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help the people who are going through some of some just difficult weather. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Be they local or be they abroad. So inshallah, locally, IIOC, as well as Uplift, they are collecting blankets. If you have blankets that you're not using, please do bring it to the Masjid, inshallah, before the 25th of January, because it will be distributed, inshallah, on the 26th. Allahumma ya Rabbi, innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anna. Allahumma farraj hamma al-mahmoomeen, wa nafis karba al-makroobeen, wa aqdi al-dayna anil madineen. Allahumma arham mawtana, wa shfi mardana, wa fukka asrana, wa aafi mubtalana, واختم بالباقيات الصالحات آجالنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنها عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة